This is R8, my second large six axis industrial robot. It's a Fanuc R2000IA 200F. It weighs 2,700 pounds, has a payload of 440 pounds, and a maximum reach of 8 feet. Also, since it's industrial grade, it's designed for harsh environments and even has an IP67 rating for the entire wrist, meaning it can handle full submersion for short periods. Most tend to think these robots are insanely expensive, which is true when they're new. A robot like this could cost almost a hundred grand. However, once they've been used for 20 odd years, they become harder to get parts for and maintain. New robots are bought to replace these old ones, even though they might be in perfectly acceptable condition. Since they're viewed as scrap by most large companies, if you know the right people, you can practically get these robots for free. Tons of industrial surplus and auction sites have these robots available for quite cheap, which is where I got this one. The main goal of this entire project was to get the robot able to run G-code. Originally the plan was to use the original FANUC controller, then write a post-processor for Fusion 360 that would output program files that the robot could read directly. So I went through all the effort to get the original controller running. I installed a three-phase converter and transformer so the controller could have the 480 volt three-phase it needed, spent a couple days fixing some error messages on the controller, then I was ready to test the robot. All the motors worked, no errors, everything appeared to be working. I remastered the robot, which is when you reset the zero position of all the joints, and tried doing some linear moves. This is where I found one of the biggest issues. It wasn't moving correctly. All the joints were moving, but not the right distances. That's when I noticed that the robot said R08 on it, but the controller says R13 on it. So I checked the firmware on the controller and it was wrong. I had gotten a controller from a 165F instead of a 200F. Since they have different gearing and joint offsets, there was no way it could have run the motors correctly. That night I came up with a bunch of different solutions. First off is trying to get the correct firmware for the current controller. By either finding someone willing to make me a copy of their firmware or buying a controller or CPU card with the correct firmware. I've tried to get just manuals from Fanuc directly and they didn't want to help, so I didn't even try to get the firmware from them. Second option is buying another robot that matched the controller. At the time there was one available for $700. However, both of these solutions still require me to make a custom post processor for Fanuc programs, which I'm not sure is quite feasible yet. The third option is finding a way to use the original Fanuc servo amplifier but using a different controller. The amplifier is connected to the CPU card through an optical fiber, so it wasn't going to be an easy task. There are three more options that are all pretty similar. They all use Linux CNC as the controller, but various different servo drives. Either buying commercial drives, using O drives, or designing my very own custom ones. In the end, I tried quite a variety of stuff. I couldn't find the correct firmware anywhere, so option 1 was out. I didn't go with option 2 since I wasn't very confident it would work. And I'd have to cart another robot 3 hours home and deal with moving it where space is already a bit limited. I spent a good bit of time on option 3. I got a logic analyzer and probed the data pins, did a bunch of research on different protocols, I even wrote some Python programs to try to help decode the data back into packets. Unfortunately, I didn't make much of any progress which was disappointing since this option was by far the highest amount of performance per cost out of them all. On to the next options. I considered using Linux CNC and commercially available drives, but the cost for new drives was around $3600, way more than I paid for the whole robot with controller, and the drives won't even be able to connect directly to the FANUC encoders. I'll get to that in more detail later. I actually designed some custom prototype drives that should have been able to run the motors at full power and interface to the FANUC encoders directly. Luckily this was right at the time when microcontrollers went out of stock basically everywhere and I didn't want to wait a year just to get parts then spend another few months working out all the bugs. So that leaves the final option, Linux CNC with O drives. That's how the robot is running now. Most industrial robots use PMAC motors with encoders on them for position feedback. PMAC or permanent magnet AC motors are basically identical to the BLDC or brushless DC motors that O-drives are designed to run. 
The main issue with O drives is their voltage. They go up to a maximum of 56 volts, while the motors in most robots want around 250 volts. That difference, along with the different commutation method between motor types, means O drives can't run the motors nearly as fast. In fact, I was only able to get a wimpy 10% of max speed. This isn't all that major of an issue since I didn't intend on moving fast in the first place. Torque output of the motors is what I was concerned about the most, which O drives can handle just fine. Most robots also tend to have brakes built into the motors that require power to unlock. They hold the arm in position while the servos are not powered. Fanuc uses 90 volt brakes, but I'm using 72 volts because it was the best I could easily get. And the brakes unlock as low as 50 volts. It is very important to be cautious when releasing the motor brakes or removing a motor from the robot. Both can cause the robot to move quite quickly due to gravity, a counterweight, or a spring balancer. That's what the large piston looking thing on the back of the robot is by the way. It's simply a giant spring that tries to keep the arm upright, helping to take the load off the motor. The real challenge was getting the encoders working. O drives and most commercially available drives support quadrature input from the encoder, which are basically incremental pulses that tell the drive how far the encoder has moved. The FANUC encoders don't do that. They instead need a request signal from the drive, then they send back their position in a binary data packet. This is extremely convenient for the FANUC server drives since it contains the single and multi-turn counts, the commutation count, and even battery and temperature OK bits. They also have battery backup to retain the robot position after power loss. Since there really isn't a good way to automatically zero the joint positions, this is very useful. The battery backup and commutation counts are why I decided to stick with using the FANUC encoders instead of simply replacing them with standard quadrature ones. The FPGA cards that Mesa sells for Linux CNC support FANUC encoders by default. Perfect, right? I took one of the motors off the robot so I could easily use it for testing. Amazingly, it actually worked. The encoder used a RS-422 connection to the FPGA card. Though drive used another RS-422 connection so I could send a commanded torque and the commutation angle from the encoder. Since the encoder's commutation output doesn't rely on battery backup or finding an index position, it will always be correct. Because of that, I was able to modify the O-Drive firmware and completely bypass the initial startup calibration that is normally needed. Since everything appeared to be working with the test setup, I hooked everything up to the robot, and it didn't work. I realized I made an oversight when looking at the pinout of the main encoder connector. There were only two data pins per encoder instead of the four that I needed. There was, however, an additional pair of pins that had an unknown use. For some reason, I had assumed they were the pair that the request signal for the encoders was sent on, and the same pair was used to request from all encoders at once. Nope, that wasn't even close. I had hooked up a scope and logic analyzer to the encoder lines before dismantling the controller, and I had gotten request pulses on one pair and encoder data back on the other. I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get the same thing. Well, as it turned out, each encoder only had one pair of data wires running to it. The controller first sends standard request pulses to the encoder, but it eventually switches over to a two-wire mode that sends request pulses, then receives data back on the same pair. Because the FPGA firmware only supported four-wire FANUC encoders, I had to add support myself. I spent weeks on that. I had never even heard of the language that FPGAs are programmed in before this, so I was starting from the ground up. Eventually, I had the request pulses matched exactly, but it still wasn't working. I ended up rebuilding the entire FANUC controller on my bench so I could try scoping the signals again. The problem ended up being with the frequency at which the request pulses were sent. In the 4-wire mode, it didn't matter how often you requested the data, the encoder would always respond. The 2-wire mode, however, must have the request pulses sent at 8 kHz, otherwise the encoder won't respond. So once I got the encoders working, I started assembling the actual controller. It has four 12 volt server power supplies to give 48 volt to the O drives, and two more 24 volt power supplies for releasing the motor brakes and for control power. I decided to use this box since it was small and would make it easy to take places. Since this controller should be able to directly plug into any FANUC robot that used an RJ3 controller, I wanted it to be portable. 
It still needs some connectors and fans added to it to be complete. Right now it's just a complete mess of wires so I can get everything tested first. The actual motion controller is Linux CNC. It was by far the best choice for this since it's so customizable. It already had a kinematics module for 6 axis robots which saved a ton of time. It handles all the path planning, G code interpreting, and PID control for the servos. Along with the custom interface I made for the O drives and some other general functions I added for controlling the brakes and joint offsets. However, there are still some issues I'm having with this setup. You can probably see in the videos that J6 is rotating the wrong direction, but that should hopefully be an easy fix. One of the big issues is the PID tuning on the servos is terrible. The following air is upwards of 0.2 degrees, which is way, way more than it should be. But when I try to increase the values, I end up with oscillations while moving slowly. It probably doesn't help that the frequency at which I'm updating the O drives is only 300 Hz compared to the many kilohertz that commercial drives run at. I am currently working on making my own custom universal servo drives to run the motors at full power and directly interface to the fan encoders. They will hopefully be able to run a variety of different motors and encoders relatively easily. There is still a lot of work to be done on them, but they will likely replace most of the parts in this current controller setup. I would like to note that even though Linux CNC is designed for G-code, other programs can easily be linked to it, such as Python, to allow custom real-time motion inputs. A GitHub repository with all the files and additional documentation is linked in the description. Feel free to post your questions below. Thanks for watching.